Hello, welcome to Resia, the research seminar in Islamic art. I'm glad to see quite a few of you uh, today uh, for the first seminar of the year. Resia is still on Zoom uh, this year to reach a wider audience and the seminars will be recorded, are recorded and uh, then uploaded uh, on the dedicated Resia uh, YouTube channel in due course. Today I'm happy to welcome Dr. Haris Dervishevich, who will be speaking uh, to us from Sarajevo. Haris is an assistant professor of Islamic art history at the University of Sarajevo, and he teaches at both the University of Sarajevo and the University of Mostar. Uh, he's currently involved in two very interesting projects. Uh, one is called uh, Under the Sky of Cheerful Faith, <laughs> Islam in Europe in the Bosnian Experience. And the other one is Islamic Architecture and Orientalizing Style in Habsburg, Bosnia. Harris is a co-editor of the Proceedings of the International Symposium on Islamic Art in Bosnia and Herzegovina and co-author of the book, 40 Bosnian and Herzegovinian Moshavs. He's a member of the editorial board of several journals, and he has published extensively on Islamic art and architecture of the region. He is a member of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, ICOMOS, and the International Council on Museums, ICOM. Um, and of the Council of the Congress of Bosniak Intellectuals and a member of the parent committee of the Bosniak Association for Culture. Um, Harris brings expertise on a region that has been for too long considered peripheral. And I'm very happy to welcome him today at Rezia because Rezia has always been concerned uh, with looking beyond what uh, he's considered the mainstream. His seminar is uh, on what was it to be a calligrapher in 18th century Sarajevo. And you can write your questions in the chat and I will read them out uh, uh, at the end of the seminar. Um, thank you, Harris, for joining us. Over to you. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have to say uh, that I'm very honored to start these research seminars in Islamic art. Uh, and uh, as you said, this, uh, my topic, the subject was on the side for a long time in the surveys of Islamic uh, art. And as you heard, uh, the title of the, my paper, or better to say research is uh, what was it to be a calligrapher in 18th century Sarajevo? Now I'm, uh, I will try to start my presentation. And I think that, okay. Um, What was it to be a calligrapher in 18th century Sarajevo? Uh, the relationship between the Bosnia and the Ottoman capital could be seen through the lens of geographical um, uh, or different social economic progress. Or better to say, uh, with center periphery theory, where Bosnia followed the Istanbul in terms of lifestyle, culture, and art. Center periphery theory questions the relationship between the center of production peripheral areas. The central periphery model helps to deconstruct the common approach to art history. That is one of the main parts of my research. Istanbul centrism is visible in the Ottoman art history studies. The works on the fringes of the empire are analyzed almost always from the perspective of the capital. The beginnings of Islamic calligraphy in Bosnia, uh, we can trace them from the middle of the 15th century, when the Ottomans conquered the kingdom of Bosnia in the 16th, in the 1463, 
the dervishes were the first to write and copy the Islamic manuscripts. The one of the oldest manuscripts in Arabic uh, is the work of Sufi content copied by Haji Muhammad bin Sefer Hisari on the 5th June, 1463. Uh, that is just six days after the last Bosnian king, Stepan Tomasevich, was executed. The scribe's name, Sefer Hisari, that I mentioned before, implies he or his father is from Sefer Hisar in Turkey, not in Bosnia. No doubt that from the middle of the 15th century, the Arabic script was present in the newly conquered Bosnian kingdom. In the beginning, the Islamic books were brought. Same time, a modest number of documents and manuscripts were written. The examples are Isa Bey and Ayaz Bey Wakuf Nama, dated in the middle of the 15th century. Under the circumstances that encouraged the development of the art, the first names of local people dedicated to Islamic calligraphy appeared. The calligraphy in Bosnia should be analyzed within the Ottoman calligraphy schools from which it arose and to which it was connected. The masters of Ottoman calligraphy taught some of the Bosnian calligraphers. Uh, when we talk about calligraphy styles or scripts, uh, the mostly the Bosnian calligraphers mostly use Nes, Srus, Muhakkak, Talik, and Nes Talik. Most Islamic heritage surveys focus on architecture, but we don't have a single monograph of any Bosnian calligrapher from any century. Thanks to the texts and papers dedicated to Bosnian calligraphy, we have brief biographies of some of them. The manuscripts are the primary source of studies of calligraphy. Sarajevo has valuable collections of uh, Islamic manuscripts known beyond the country borders. The most significant is the Ghazi Husabe Library, established in the 1431. Also, the Bosniak Institute, Oriental Institute, Historical Archive of Sarajevo, and National and uh, University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They all have very valuable collections of Islamic manuscripts. Each of the mentioned institutions published catalogs with precious information, uh, information for researchers. Um, also, I have to add here the private museum Sheikh Hafiz Musa Jazim Hajimelic in central Bosnia. It is the most important private collection of calligraphy and Hebrew, Hebrew art with the works of Mehmet Esar Yesar Efendi, Kazasker Mustafa Izet Efendi, Sami Efendi, Omer Vasi Efendi, Kema Batenai, Ali Al Paslan, uh, Hassan Celebi, and others. Safebek Bashagic was a Viennese student and prominent intellectual who wrote about the cultural history of Bosnia in the lexicon Famous Croats, Bosniak, and Herzegovinians in the Turkish Empire, published in the 1931. In this lexicon, he mentioned seven Bosniak calligraphers. This lexicon is on the path of that tradition in, in the beginning of the 19th century uh, that could be compared to, to uh, today, uh, like who is who. The another researcher and also artist the, that wrote about calligraphy in Bosnia was Joko Mazalic, artist, and as I said, a historical. He did a similar project, publishing the lexicon of artists in 1967. Between medieval scribes, it is interesting that he made distinction between medieval scribes and masking calligraphers, stating that calligraphers for him cultivated only the calligraphy of the Oriental script. This lexicon contains the names of 81 uh, Islamic calligrapher. Mehmet Muizinoc, a long-time employee uh, of the Office for Protection of Cultural Monuments, is the author of the three-volume book, Islamic Epigraphy in Bosnia. At the end of each volume, Muizinoc added a list of calligraphers. The author imposed his work as one of the fundamental sources for researching Islamic epigraphy and calligraphy. And 
Here is the photograph of Smail Balic, employee at the Austrian National Library, distinguished researcher of Islamic history and culture, mostly focusing on Islamic heritage in Bosnia. Balic gave the most comprehensive and systematic list of career firsts in the book Culture of Bosniaks. The list is a translation of the, his German text, Calligraphie und, und Miniaturmalerei, from uh, his study Das Ubenkante Bosnian, Europa's Bürger zur Islamische Welt. Uh, it would be unthinkable to understand the heritage of Islamic manuscripts in Bosnia without mentioning Mohamed Dralovic and his work, Bosnian Herzegovinian Copies of Works in Arabic uh, Texts, which is uh, his PhD thesis. The research is divided in two volumes. History of libraries in Bosnia is in the first volume, and the second volume is a catalog of Islamic manuscripts inscribed by Bosnia. Uh, in the last decades, there are several books dedicated to Islamic calligraphy in global, uh, but it took a long time to get a book by a Bosnian author. Chazim Hajimelic published his research, The Art of Islamic Calligraphy in 2009. In chapter, The Art of Calligraphy in the Balkans and Bosnia, there are names of unknown calligraphers, or to, to say calligraphers that were uh, unknown before. Ottoman time, Bosniak scholars were two calligraphers, and their biographies could be found in anthology of literature. It is noticeable that papers about Bosnian calligraphers are rare, but there are still a certain number of texts that deal with the life of calligraphers and their works. Two, when we talk about context, uh, two decisive moments in the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina occurred at the turn of the 17th and 18th century. The first was the attack of the Habsburg prince Eugen of Savoy in the 1697, and the second was the Battle of Banja Luka, the city of Banja Luka, in 1737. The first attempt was a success, but the second was a disaster for the Habsburg troops. Eugen Savoy's rampage was a blow to the prosperity of Bosnia. To feel the charm of Sarajevo before 1697, we should refer to the text of the famous Ottoman traveler Evlia Celebi, who visited the city in 1660 and wrote, There are, I quote, there are many cities called Saraj, but this Bosnian city of Sarajevo is the most advanced beautiful and light. Boneless and numerable living water flow in the lower and upper part of the city. And on all sides are gardens which look like rose and fenced gardens of paradise." End of quote. Travelers from the East made positive impressions of Sarajevo, but Europeans who visited the city also did. Luan Jadouin, the French consul in Aleppo, was the first French traveler who wrote about Sarajevo. In the January 1624, he spent seven days in the city. And in his diary, he says, city is big as Venice. And in terms of size, it approaches Paris. Sarajevo has been a commercial and cultural center for more than a century. The invasion of Elgin of Savoy interrupted the golden age of the city. After October 1697, Sarajevo never returned to its former glory. The Kurt record shows the condition of the buildings after the Prince of Savoy's invasion. The document clearly states that the Habsburg troops set fire to and destroyed the city. Forty years later, Bosnia and Bosniaks regained their self-confidence in Battle of City of Banja Luka in 1737, when the troops of the Habsburg Empire went on a campaign guided by the information that Bosnia was not ready for action, which seemed like a good time to attack. When the threat was obvious, Bosnian governor Ali Pasha Hekimolu organized the defense 
on his initiative without awaiting the Sultan's approval. Bosnaks defeated the Habsburg troops near Banja Luka on August 1737. After this date, after this year, the Habsburgs did not start military campaigns for the next several decades. New taxes caused the crisis of the Ottoman Empire. Riots broke out. Sarajevo and Mostar were the centers of the uprising. The canon economy of Bosnia slowed down. But when we think about the 18th century, it was a time of intellectual revival, and the main center was again Sarajevo. Among the most prominent figures of the time were poet and calligrapher Mehmed Meili Gurani, professor of Medresa and secretary of the Kurd Abdullah Kantamiri, poet and calligrapher Mustafa Narudin Sharifovic Nuri, librarian and mufti of Sarajevo Muhammad Fonichanin, and not to forget Kadi historian and poet Muhammad Emin Isevic, Sheikh and professor of Medresa Razi Veli Hojazade, Kadi Mehmed Johadjic, and at the end, chronicle Mula Mustafa Bashevsky. In the abstract that I sent, I mentioned that in the 18th century Sarajevo, there were uh, schools of calligraphy. From the 15th to the end of the 19th century, Bosnia and Herzegovina belonged to the world of the Ottoman civilization. That is the reason why calligraphy of Bosnia cannot be viewed outside the Ottoman calligraphy tradition. The schools of calligraphy were formed on the model of those in Istanbul, following the Ottoman calligraphy chain. Few calligraphy diplomas of Bosnia calligraphers are preserved. These dipl uh, documents, diplomas, or ijazet name, apart from being a proof that the student became a calligrapher, contain other information, such as the professor's name, the calligraphy script for which diploma is obtained, the year of graduation, and calligraphy chain. This is the photo of, uh, from the theater play named Bashevskia Sarajevo Dream. Uh, Chronicle Mula Mustafa Bashevsky is the best source for understanding the 18th century Sarajevo. Uh, between the 1746 and 1804, Mula Mustafa Bashevsky recorded almost every event that happened in Sarajevo. All historians of Sarajevo use the chronicle. During the, his 50 years of writing, he probably did not know that his manuscript uh, is going to be very valuable. From the 1747, he compiled an annual obituary and along with the name of the deceased, he wrote remarks. After reading the chronicle, it was concluded that Sarajevo was calligrapher, calligraphy center. Uh, in his chronicle, Bashevsky mentions cal calligraphers such as Emin Defedar. I will now quote the parts from this, his uh, chronicle. Emin Defedar, known in all Bosnia as an excellent calligrapher in various styles of calligraphy, intellect intellectual, between 80 to 90 years. He died in Travnik. Omer Efendi Zafrani, the deputy Katib in Mehkeme, looked like Ottoman, calligrapher of Divani. Yellowish skin. White bearded Sheikh Suleiman, son of Sheikh Idris, Kaderi, Bashevsky of the 39th Jamaat, Hatib of the Ali Pasha Mosque, at the same time a Sheikh and Turbedar. He knew Divani. Gurani, whose pen name was Meili, was long haired Devish in Chula from a prominent family, intellectual and well-educated, an excellent poet, so that there was no equal in Bosnia. He was a local, bachelor, smart, white, uh, with, with clear memory, well, and well learned. He was also a painter. Although he knew Arabic grammar and syntax, he did not stand out as connoisseur of Arabic language. 
he wrote Talik script very beautiful. Uh, one name in his chronicles stands out, and that is Haji Hassan El Refai Misri. And now I will quote the parts dedicated to this calligrapher in the chronicle of Mullah Mustafa Bashevsky. Calligrapher Haji Hassan Effendi Misri, merchant, he came to Sarajevo with 10 bags of Akche and married the daughter of Christian Kamber. Within a short time, he gave several students diplomas in calligraphy. He went to Egypt, then returned to Sarajevo, got ill and died. This is the drawing from the tombstone of Haji Hassan Efai Misri. It is unknown when Hassan Efai arrived in Sarajevo, he had two wives. That is information that documents uh, show us. Uh, the one wife was in Sarajevo and the other in Cairo. And he lived in the Mahale of Sultan Fatih Mask. He had a business partner in Sarajevo as well as in his homeland. Hassan Effendi was a skilled and wealthy merchant who was selling goods from Egypt, such as expensive textiles, carpets, swords, and daggers. After he died, his assets, asset was over 400,000 akche. He was generous and left a third of his property to charity in his will. Dozens of different pens, a variety of paper, calligraphy knives and scissors, calligraphy textbook were found in his possession. Elefai Effendi was a calligrapher, but the listed items suggest he sold calligraphy equi equipment. He was a true connoisseur of art. The Mus'haf in his legacy was estimated at 14,400 14, action. For those of you familiar with Islamic calligraphy in Egypt, I will stress that Ahmed Shukri, one of the most recognized calligraphers in Egypt, was Hassan Effendi's professor. In the book, Jud al Khat, or to, to uh, translate, Excellence of Calligraphy, is the 18th century work dedicated to the history of Islamic calligraphy, in which author Murtad al Zabadi, mentions that Ahmed Shukri was a student of Muhammad Nuri, a known calligrapher. That means uh, that, that, uh, that Hassan al-Refai belonged to the prominent, uh, prominent calligraphy tradition in Egypt. In the 18th century, Egyptian calligraphy, to which Hassan al-Refai Hassan belongs, followed the path of Ottoman calligraphy, known as Tariq al-Hamdiyya, or the Sheikh Hamdullah way. In the chronicle of Mullah Mustafa Bashevsky, it is written that, I will now quote again, for a short period, he gave several students diplomas in calligraphy, which is the evidence that Hassan Effendi founded a school of calligraphy in Sarajevo. Unfortunately, no works of Alefai are preserved, but we can only judge his calligraphy skills after seeing the works of his students. And here is the one diploma that he gave to Muhammad Al Rashidi, one of the Sarajevo calligraphers uh, in the 18th century. But uh, we know the name of the others that. Uh, them, uh, okay, here are they. Ibrahim Babic Almuti, Ahmed Imam, Ahmed Fehmi, and Ismail Zihni Konitsi. Besides Haji Hassan Refai School of Calligraphy, calligraphy uh, there were others too. School of Calligraphy or School of Haji Muhammad Sarayli, Ismail Zihni, Ahmed Lutfi, and uh, etc. In his chronicle, Bashevsky, mentions the death of certain Mustafa Bekri. You can see here the part of the, the, the Ijazet Nama or diploma that Hassan Refai uh, issued to, to one of his 
students and now this diploma is uh, in the collection of university library in Bratislava. Uh, there is one interesting information in the chronicle of the Mullah Mustafa Beshevsky. Uh, he mentions the death of certain Mustafa Bekri with the words, Bekri Mustafa wrote calligraphy works and sold them. He drew beautifully, although he was not a real calligrapher. And this is the work of this Mustafa Bekri that Mullah Mustafa Beshevsky mentions in, mentioned in, in Chronicle. Uh, although Beshevsky says that Mustafa Bekri practiced calligraphy, he does not consider him a calligrapher. It is possible that Bekri did not have Ijazet Nama or diploma because he was maybe self-taught. Even though his writing was beautiful, he could not claim to be an excellent artist. Bashevsky does not answer the question or hint at the criteria on which the judgment is based. The 20th century art historian did not establish the criteria for recognizing calligraphers. The criteria were known before. Only one work of Becker is known. This is Levha or calligraphy uh, work dated in 1788. And this is the oldest found Levha by the Bosnian calligrapher. Now is placed in Mimar Sina Mask in Sarajevo. Levha is written in Jali Sulus with black ink or uh, when, when uh, uh, you can say in Ish Murakab using the traditional technique. The composition is stiff, fills most of the background. It is proportional except for some letters that you can see. Ways with flowers is in the left corner and roses on the right. Between the letters are flowers and the leaves. The text of this levha is uh, ayat, from, ayat from Quran. Now, uh, we are going to talk about art market in the 18th century Sarajevo and about uh, calligraphy. Now, I'm uh, going to also quote the part of the story that was uh, about one calligraphy, uh, 18th century calligraphy in Sarajevo. Another person called the attention of Mullah Mustafa. It was the half-blind Hafiz Ibrahim, a man with a pure heart quiet and modest, who, despite this, bore the gorgeous title, Tsar's Imam. He got the name because he was the Imam of the Tsar's mask for many years. But he was much more famous for another thing. He was an excellent copist of Mushaf. Until his sight became cloudy and almost extinguished, he worked like this. On the last copy of the Mushaf, before he closed it, Hafiz Ibrahim wrote with a trembling hand, inscribed by the hand of poor Ibrahim, son of Haji Muhammad, may the almighty Allah forgive, who covers all shame. The tear he shed afterwards spilled over the written letters." End of quote. Reshad Kadic, Bosnian novelist, tried to revive the personality of Ibrahim Shekhovic, 18th century calligrapher of Sarajevo, it is not surprising that the image of Ibrahim Shekhovic impressed the writer. Among all the Sarajevo calligraphers, he was the only one who became legendary and was given a unique place as a good man and great calligrapher. Hafiz Ibrahim was most likely born, likely born in Sarajevo and signed himself as Ibrahim, son of Haji Muhammad Sarai, but tradition states his last name was Shehovic. For years, Ibrahim Shehovic was Imam of the Tsar's mosque or Sultan Fatih mosque in Sarajevo. Besides he was Imam, Hafiz Ibrahim copied numerous manuscripts, among them over 60 Qurans, concluding that he was a sought after calligrapher because of the number of manuscripts. Hafiz Ibrahim's Musafs were appreciated evidenced by the fact they were known as the Mushafs of the Tsar's Imam. 
Ibrahim was a notable choreographer of Sulus and Nesk, but not all of his manuscripts have been preserved. His first known manuscript is the 32nd copy of the Quran from the 1780. In the same year, he finished the 33rd copy, confirming the hypothesis his musas were very popular. Further, he copied other works such as the Lailo Herat. In the year 1800, Hafiz Ibrahim completed, finished the 54th, 55th, and 56th copy of the Mushaf or Quran. He finished the 66th in the year 1812, the year of his death. His grave was next to Sheikh Baghdadi Mosque in Sarajevo. Now I'm going to show you a very interesting subject or interesting uh, uh, thing about the Islamic calligraphy of the 18th century. And about, for me, the first gallery of Islamic calligraphy, uh, I wouldn't say in Ottoman, but uh, Ottoman art, but in Bosnia, for sure. Uh, the Bosnian tradition has deep roots in Sufism. Historical sources, archaeological material, and oral tradition testify to their presence in the first half of the 15th century. During the following centuries, Dervish orders expanded. So in Bosnia, it is possible to find the Bektashi, Halveti, Berami, Melami, Kaderi, Mevlevi, Rifai, Shezili, Bedevi, and others with, uh, in different times. Haji Sina Tek in Sarajevo is Teke of Kadiri Tarika or Kadiri Oda and one of the most significant in Bosnia. Silahdar Mustafa Pasha, a close associate of Sultan Murat IV, ordered its construction. Uh, the construction followed the successful campaign of Baghdad in 1639, the conquest in which Silahdar Mustafa Pasha participated. The positive outcome of the military operation or campaign and the desire to express gratitude to his birthplace, Sarajevo, inspired Mustafa Pasha's uh, foundation of the Teke. The Teke was epicenter of all events related to the life of Dervishes and Sufism, both in Sarajevo and the Balkans. Its sheikhs were well known for their activities. One of the most prominent was Sheikh Hassan Kaimi Baba, Sheikh, Sheikh of the 18th century. The works in Bosnian, Arabic, Turkish, and Persian were read and commented in the Tekka. At one point, the hospital was part of it. The Tekka is for, famous for the calligraphy works on the walls. Three walls in the reception area have the 94 calligraphy uh, compositions, the ayahs of the Quran, hadith, and dervish sayings are written. Four different styles of script were used Kufi, Talik, Jelly, and Nasr. Only a few works were written in Kufi script, 40 in Talik, 12 in Jelly or Jelly Slus, and 28 in Nasr script. Ten things are still stilized uh, uh, in the form of Tugra uh, and vase and other uh, in, an, in a, yeah, and uh, other and roses. The longest uh, calligraphy work is written in two lines on all three walls. Jalinesque script is used for the inscription. The letters are 22 centimeters high. Ahmed Sheikh of uh, Ghazi Husay Bey Hanika is the author of the text. He did this uh, work in the 1745. Uh, One of the biggest compositions of the works is the this one. Its diameter is 2.85 meters, but to say it is almost three meters in diameter. 
It is placed on the courtyard wall. You can see here, repeat 12 times, it is written, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And in the middle, in the center of this work, is the seal of Suleiman, or Muhur of Suleiman. Uh, in her paper, the visual of the top copy albums, albums, Lale Uluc found out that lastly, some instances of the 18th century transfers of calligraphy compositions from top copy album pages in monumental scale on a wall can be seen in the Sinanova Tech in Sarajevo. That is very important, important. So we can say that Sarajevo had very good connection with Istanbul and that that fashion in Islamic calligraphy in 18th century Istanbul and Kurt artists, you can find here also. Uh, because I'm art historian, I see the Teke walls as the gallery of Islamic calligraphy. In the end, this is the conclusion of my research and the conclusion of our meeting. We can say that in the 18th century in Sarajevo, there were many or number of calligraphers, schools of calligraphy, high aesthetic values, a variety of calligraphy styles or different calligraphy styles, art market, gallery of Islamic calligraphy. Thank you very much for your patience. And I hope that this, uh, my paper was, and research was interesting. Thank you very much. And I will be very happy if you have any questions and happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Harris. Thank you very much for, uh, for this very interesting um, uh, lecture. And uh, to the audience, please write your, uh, your comments or your questions in the chat. Yes, thank you, Harris. That was has given us a broad picture uh, and insights, sometimes wonderful and humorous at times insights into the uh, the history and uh, uh, the calligraphy and calligraphers of the Bosnian region over a large period of time. So um, uh, before we go to the chat, I, I just wanted to ask you one. I've got several questions, but I'll ask you one. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Yes. Um, I just was wondering, you know, when you talked about the art market, um, what, I mean, how is it meant, the art market? It is, you know, you, you made that, uh, you, you gave the example, the example of the merchant Haji Hassan al Wafari Misri with that beautiful tombstone and, uh, and, and the fact that he was going back and forth and he was obviously a merchant. Uh, so, so was it very localized? Was was it very wide within the wider Islamic world? How was it organized? Do we know anything about that? You think about this merchant Hassan al Fai? No, I mean in general. When in you general. Think about the art market in Sarajevo, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, we know that the. There are a few research uh, papers about and texts about the way that Islamic manuscripts and books came to Bosnia. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, the Bosnian scholars went to Istanbul and also ordered some uh, books to be copied for them. And there is one place in in a city of Foča. It is in the eastern part of uh, Bosnia, we have the information from the 16th century that the 16 calligraphers uh, set together for a project to copy one Ottoman encyclopedia in, uh, I think, about the, uh, 20 volumes. And we, at the end of this, uh, of, the, of the last volume, there is uh, information uh, that one of the prominent figures of that place, of that city of Ocha, ordered to copy, to, to have this encyclopedia. And also the uh, in the Ottoman sources that we can find in Sarajevo, we we can see that some of the uh, the say books were uh, 
bought in, in Egypt, uh, in the Syria, in uh, other parts of the today's Turkey, and they were brought here. So we, we so the conclusion is that uh, the there were the merchants that that they just bought the books from the other parts of the Islamic world and they brought them here. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, comments and questions in the chat. I'm going to read them out. Giada Vercelli, thank you very much, Dr. Dervishevich, for your very interesting lecture. It is refreshing to hear that you have founded your research on a center versus periphery axis. I'm studying the role of agency of the House of Savoy in European art history, and in particular in Chinoiserie in the 18th century. Prince Eugene, whom you mentioned, gained Europe-wide fame for defeating Ottoman Empire at the Battle of Zenta in 1697. I understand that his role is only tangential to your research. He assembled a very important art and book collection. I was wondering if you have ever come across any primary source about him looting calligraphy books in Sarajevo, and most importantly, what they were about. I'm interested in books with images of plants, animals, and I see that some of the texts you presented have some intertextual images of flowers, like Mustafa Bakri, 1787, which obviously would not apply because it was written after Eugene attacks Sarajevo. Anyway, yeah. Uh, about the Eugen of Savoy, the Prince of Eugen of Savoy, uh, we know that he, uh, he looted Sarajevo, but we don't have any, any information that he was interested in manuscripts and collection of collecting the manuscript. But Sarajevo was a very famous city uh, of goldsmiths, and I think that his uh, his attention was uh, to to get uh, more gold than manuscripts in that time. And I think that he don't had had much time to go to 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 the city and uh, collect the, the, the books and other stuff. But uh, the other information from that, it is uh, dated just two years after his, uh, let's say, visiting of Sarajevo. And we see that almost all hundred masks in Sarajevo were destroyed or got fired, uh, or got fired. So I think that the, about talking about manuscripts, I don't think so. And maybe, but, but we can think, talk about other example, uh, other part, uh, other, examples of art or objects of art that maybe uh, Elgin of Savoy took with him from the from Sarajevo and other because he went from the from the north to the center center uh, Bosnian center Sarajevo is let's say some kind of this in the central Bosnia and maybe maybe in the other parts uh, maybe he just got some few months but I don't I don't think so that's not my my opinion Okay, thank you very much. Then we have uh, Nancy Miko Wright. Thank you for such a fascinating talk. Do any of your sources mention visits of calligraphers from Istanbul, or did calligraphers from Sarajevo travel there? In other words, how did the local calligraphers learn about what was going on in Istanbul calligraphy? Uh, Sarajevo. Let's go back to the to the 10th century, not to the Ottoman period. Uh, the the from the middle of the Middle Ages, Bosnia and Sarajevo had very good connections with the Constantinople, and I think that connection relationship between Sarajevo and Bosnia still exists. And the merchants, the travelers, the people from Bosnia go went go. Uh, returned from the Istanbul and you know this this uh, road from the central central Europe to 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 the Constantinople is it was from the uh, Roman times but when you talk about the calligraphy uh, Mustakim Zade in his uh, book about the, the famous calligraphers of the Ottoman calligraphers he mentions about 40 Bosnian calligraphers in that time in Istanbul and some of them, not all, all of them, uh, came back to the homeland, to Bosnia, bringing the new experience from the capital of Ottoman Empire. And 
I don't know that famous calligraphers from the Istanbul came to Sarajevo, but there are there are the the the, the, the people from all over the as you see the Egyptian Egypt and the, the and others. The Sarajevo was interesting because it it was the it was placed uh, at more as most Western uh, say capital of the Ottoman Ottoman. Empire, the most important uh, city at the Ottoman West. I hope that I answered the, the question. Yes, there was the relationship, bit, but uh, we don't know if there were the, uh, say, calligraphers from Istanbul coming to Sarajevo, but we know the calligraphers from Bosnia going there. Thank you. Um, before we go to the next one in the chat, I have uh, another question that is vaguely related, uh, because I wanted to ask you about illuminators, uh, because you showed these beautiful books, Qurans in particular, with the beautiful calligraphy and then a lot of illumination around it, where their center of production of, of the whole book, including illumination, um, you know, where, where were they? Were they in Sarajevo itself? Uh the source from the late uh, 16th century, I think this from the dated in the 1580, give us information that uh, in the very center of the Sarevo, it was formed the part of the city that, with the Mujalits or the work, the, 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 the artisans of the book. And I think they were the one who illuminated the manuscripts. But also I found a very interesting thing that one calligrapher, Bosnian calligrapher, uh, for years didn't change the way, the style of his illumination. And this illumination is very similar to the one of the manuscripts of famous Ottoman uh, calligrapher, Derwish Ali. And I think that in every way they, they they followed the Ottoman uh, way of, of and style of an illumination. And I, after I did res many researches by, about the Bosnian calligraphers, my conclusion is that the calligraphers, in most way, they were all, uh, all they were the, the miniatures, the illuminators. But this way, the book binding, we had these special artisans or artists for that. Mm, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Elizabeth Alexandrine who says, thank you so much for this wonderful talk, Dr. Dervishevich. The Ijazat Nama of Rashidi is very interesting and wonderful to see. Do you have any additional information you can share with us about the type of paper it was, it was written on and perhaps the dimensions of the certificate itself? Uh. I don't know the, the, the measures. I could find find somewhere I have, but uh, I compared this Ijazet Naame or diploma that Hassan Vefai Misri issued to his student Rashidi to one uh, other diploma, 18th century diploma issued in the same time in Egypt. And conclusion is that the style, the form, the text, everything that we could find Rashidi diploma in Bosnia is the almost the same that we can find in Egypt because they, that was the Ottoman world and the Ottoman civilization. In the the calligraphy in Egypt, calligraphy in Bosnia, they followed the style of the Ottoman capital. So there is no difference between the diplomats in Jazet Nama in Bosnia, Jazet Nama in Egypt, and I also compare this uh, calligraphy chain that found this Rashidi diploma with the one in Egypt and others diplomas issued in Istanbul. In a, and I found that the chains never change. Yeah, I, I wonder whether, you know, I wonder too, whether you could say something, maybe there hasn't been any research and it's a bit unfair to ask you about the paper because that paper, especially the detail that you showed, showed okay, uh, peculiarities, yeah. Uh, I'm not the... the the, the that's okay no 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 yeah i could i could answer because i uh 
that is not the focus of my research, but I came across one a few interesting uh, things in, in the Gazusa Bay Library. Uh, the paper in Bosnia came from the east, uh, say from Istanbul, but uh, also came from the Dalmatia Dubrovnik and the Vene uh, from the Venice. Um, as I said, it was not strange, but it uh, better to say uh, interesting. I was going through the one Quran, um, uh, for, I think it is the 17th or 18th century, I don't, I don't know, it was a few years ago. And I took take a look about what the, the you know, these watermarks that uh, you can find the European uh, paper. I found the cross on it, in it. It was the, the mark of one workshop, I think, in, in North Italy. But the Quran was written on that on that uh, paper. So we, it is interesting. You can see the, the little cross on the on the sides of this paper. But yeah. the earlier friend Bosnia didn't mind to, to write the words of God on that. So conclusion, uh, we, we can say that the paper in Bosnia came from the Italy and from the other parts of Europe. And in the middle of the 18th century, there was a dispute between Ottoman Empire and uh, I think European countries. But Bosnia, Bosnia continued to make the trade with uh, Europe, and there was a document issued by from the Ottoman court to stop this trade because they were in the fight. So, so to, to, Bosnia was on the on the very edge, and sometimes they didn't listen from the, the orders from the court. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, please write them in the chat. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you know the beautiful square Kufic um, uh, Shahada that you showed, which is also the image of, of your poster, the three meters. Yes, yes. Uh, diameter. What is the material? Uh, the, uh, it, is, it is the, the color applied on Stucco. Uh, it is the, the it is Kako because yeah. I, I could see that it's not on the wall. It's it it goes beyond the wall. So it it is no, not it, in no, it is on the wall. It is, oh, on, it the is, wall. On, the it wall. is on the wall. Yes, okay. it is on the wall. Okay. It is the traditional wall painting that you can find in the mosques, but mm. the the restorers had very problems to to keep it on the wall because it, it, sometimes they, they had the problems with that. Sure. It is as I know, it is one of the the. Uh, unique, unique calligraphy uh, work in the Ottoman 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 art history. I didn't, I didn't find something similar to the in the history of society. Really beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you. If there aren't any other question, I just want, was wondering very briefly, uh, Harris, if you could tell us, you know, in the audience something about your project under the sky of cheerful faith and the possible exhibition that you okay. are preparing. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Contandini for this question. And we are planning, uh, say I'm the part of the project with the name the, under the sky of cheerful faith. It is the big research project. Uh, we are planning to make exhibition in the September next year. That is the research project with the main focus on Islamic culture, tradition in Bosnia. And about, for now, it is more than 200 people, researchers, professors, uh, university professors uh, in, in this project. We are try, the, trying to say that Bosnia has these two roots, uh, the European one and the one or from the east, and this is the the place to get from gathering two different cultures. And that the in Bosnia you can say there is you can find the non-Islamic tradition in the in the Bosnian culture that it, it is different from the say from the Turkey from the other parts, and also that the this European tradition in the living Islam in Bosnia way, and. What that is not, we are, we are, we are trying to show and present uh, this heritage to ourselves because we still don't know 
lot of about our tradition and also we are trying to present the Islamic tradition, the culture of Bosnia to uh, as well as on the east, uh, because we are planning to have this exhibition in the capitals in Europe and the other, in the, on, also in the east. And because I'm an uh, art historian, uh, almost every week we are going to these uh, collections in the country, uh, searching for the new objects. And uh, on last Sunday, we went in one, one pro private collection and we found the works of Sami Effendi, the other Ali Al Kastan, and also the, the, the other famous Bosniak uh, calligraphers, but also to try the the collect to, to present the collection of the Bosnia carpets to the wider uh, audience and also to, to show, say, the it is little known that one of the best uh, commentators of the Ibn Arabi was the Bosnian author, author Abdullah Bushnak, and that the Bosnians went also established the, the the chairs of Islamic thought in Cairo and uh, Damask, uh, Damascus and, and Istanbul. So that is the one of it. it, it, it is, uh, and also I suggest you to visit the, the, the internet site. You can find Bo, uh, Bosnian experience. It is that I think dot com. I, and you can find the texts and very good text in English. And that is about the project. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. There are actually a couple of other questions in the chat. So Valerie Gonzalez, thank you Harris for this lovely presentation as I had the opportunity to visit Sarajevo in 2006 and to meet Bosnian calligraphers and their beautiful work. I was wondering whether their work is better studied or documented than the traditional one. Could you talk, uh, could, you, could you say a word about contemporary calligraphy? Uh... Yes, uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor Gonzalez. And uh, Bosnia is still connected with the uh, Ottoman world. <laughs> uh, the, the professor of mine, uh, Chazim Hajimelic, he was the student of famous Hassan Chelebi. And uh, there are still uh, professional, or say, the calligraphers in traditional manner, but only few say there are uh, two of them trying to make some contemporary approaches to, to calligraphy. And I think, uh, I'm sorry, sorry to say, the audience is not interested in this uh, contemporary Islamic calligraphy. I am, but the others are not. And one of my, 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 if I have the time, I can find the, the work of, uh, of my colleague and just to, for, to show you the way the work of her, uh, say, uh, just a moment, maybe the Professor Gonzalez would uh, be interested in, in her, just a second, sorry, uh, just take a few minutes to open this. Uh, while, while you're searching that, I, I just wanted to say that um, in the Brunei Gallery in SOAS from January 2023, we'll have a huge exhibition on calligraphy that comes, Islamic calligraphy that comes, uh, so there will be an area for, you know, um, historical calligraphy, but the majority of the exhibition will be on contemporary calligraphy. Uh, this is the work of my colleague. Uh... She's a professor of, of uh, art history and also the art uh, painter. And this is the way she started to deconstruct the Arabic uh, letters. And then she continued to deconstruct the Kufic script to the lines. And with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the most, uh, for me, it is the mo one of the most abstract works from her pen. And then she uh, finished her calligraphy. She started to treat life in uh, calligraphy in traditional way, but uh, searching for the essence of calligraphy, the meaning of the calligraphy, it was, it was the, these pillars of belief, her work, 
I think is about uh, finished in, in dated uh, in 2010. And that is, as I said, contemporary calligraphy that you can find in Bosnia. It's very uh, interesting. It is very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we have another question from Yasmin Mayhill. Thank you so much for the talk, Dr. Dervisovic. As someone based in Beirut, I found it fascinating seeing your approach to this from the periphery center point of view. But what I found more interesting is this connection between two different peripheries with Egypt, Bosnia. I just wanted to ask what you think this dialogue brought to the art as opposed to center periphery relationship that is more biased usually to the center. Thank you. Uh, it's an interesting question. I mean, it is a very interesting question because it is the dialogue between two peripheries uh, of the Ottoman world. And I ask myself, what brought Hassan the Fire Misri to Sarajevo? But after uh, reading the Chevers, the, the, the diaries of the Chevers from the East and the West, they always mention Sarajevo as the place, as a paradise. Uh, the Europeans, the one of the traveler from the uh, from Italy, he compares Sarajevo to Padova, and uh, others, as like Hassan, the the, the, the Evlia Celebi, he said as the Sarajevo is most of the be the be most beautiful city that uh, that has the, this uh, prefix Saray. And I think this story uh, was uh, came to the to these uh, merchants in Egypt, and they were looking for the best place for their for their uh, for for the trade. And uh, maybe they just wanted something new. Maybe they were maybe Hassan the Fai was adventurer, so he wanted to to try to go to the Ottoman West. Because and uh, also what brought the lot of merchants and uh, travelers to Sarajevo. Uh, that is, I, I, I don't, I can, I cannot quote, but I remember the way this European traveler described it in the 17th century Sarajevo. He said that in the market, the 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 main market in Sarajevo, you can see different people from different places from Europe, from Dalmatia to Venice, from, from, uh, from uh, France, the, the Turks, the Egyptian. And maybe it could also be interesting for you that, that uh, Egyptian were not, only, were not only in Sarajevo, they were also the group of Egyptian in the Sultan city of Mostar. Mm. So Hassan Refai visited them. So I don't know what, they, I think that they made the group of the Arab, Arab, Arab merchants in Bosnia. Thank you. Uh, Tanya Tola, thank you, Harris, for a fascinating talk. I was wondering if there is any connection between the work of these calligraphers and the scripts used on objects. For example, metalwork that you mentioned, or were these two different uh, traditions not working together? <laughs> thank you very much, Professor Tola. And also, uh, before, uh, before uh, answering, I want to add that uh, I'm open to do the projects together with, uh, or with the researchers from, from abroad, uh, because I found here very interesting thing and, and topics for, for further research. And maybe this, this uh, relationship Egypt and Bosnia could be maybe the, the one, of, one of them. And uh, Professor Tolar, uh, yes, the, we, we can find the calligraphy on tombstones, the calligraphy on the architecture, the masks, also on the metalwork, and the, the on also on textiles. But Bosnia was famous for for three I mean, regarding Islamic art. It is the uh, Art of the art of the stone, uh, art of the metal, and also the calligraphy or the the art of the book. 
So uh, I found a lot of the the tombstones are very are, uh, say the the masterpieces of the art of the stone in the Bosnia. I I think that I few few weeks ago I posted one on the on the on the Facebook the the tombstone from the southern part of Bosnia that the height is the almost five meters. Uh, one I think it is the biggest and the, the to highest Ottoman tombstone in, in Europe. I don't know if there is any in, in other places. But also we can find a calligraphy on, the, on it. And when we, when we take a look to the objects in metal, we can find the, the calligraphy. Maybe sometimes it is a poet, uh, uh, poetry. Sometimes it's just dedication to someone or just that it belongs to someone. But calligraphy. Yes, I, I found it on different countries. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that was a really interesting discussion. And if there aren't any other questions, just thank you, Harris. And to the audience, uh, come back next month for on the 24th of November for Richard McClary's talk on ceramics. And thank you very much, Harris. That was really uh, Thank you very much for inviting me to be the part of these seminars. Yeah. As I said, I'm really honored to, to start this, this cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we hope that this is the beginning of a, of a interesting relationship on, on these subjects. A round of uh, virtual applause. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.